Hey guys, welcome back to the channel again and to a new video. This is the second video of 2021 and in this video we are going to install and explore the Alpine Mail Client. Now the Alpine Mail Client is a terminal email client that was developed by the University of Washington in 1991 and it's thought to be as an easier alternative to MUT or NeoMUT. So in this video we are going to install it and explore its basic functions, so let's get going. So here we are again on the desktop of Arch Linux. I just installed very quickly here the GNOME desktop environment. And let me show you here in the terminal, if I type in uname-r, you can see we are here on the latest kernel at the time of this recording, which is 5.10.4. Now, let me pull up here the browser, which I already prepared for you guys. This is the Arch Wiki about the Alpine text-based email client and it shows you basically how you can install it and how you can configure it. Now, this tutorial is based on this wiki, so everything you see is found actually here also on the wiki as well, except a couple of things about the server. So this is something that I had to research also myself because my email server, the one I use for my domain, has a special mailbox structure, which then has to be put in into the configuration for Alpine. Now, every email server might have a different configuration. So this configuration that I'm going to show you in this video might not work or might work also with yours. There are also online other resources that you can search for to find out, first of all, how your inbox is structured and then also how you can put it into the configuration file for Alpine. Now, Alpine is actually a fairly simple email client. It's a little bit easier to configure than MUT or NeoMUT as it provides a text graphic interface basically so the first thing we need to do here is actually to install the package so Alpine is from the AUR as you can see here so you can install it via git clone or you can install it via yay if you have yay installed so if you followed one of my guides about installing the base of Arch Linux, you should have already yay installed so let me go full screen here and I'm gonna use yay to install Alpine so let's type in yay dash s and then Alpine and hit enter and then we can choose the repository. I'm going to choose the default number one here. And the difference is to show, I will say none. And I'm going to be asked probably for the password afterwards. So this is going to take some time to download and compile. And I'll be back with you guys when it's going to ask me to install the package. So there we go. Here we are asked for the pseudo password. So let me type this in. And now the package is installed. Let me clean up the terminal here and we can start Alpine with just one command here in the terminal. Alpine, by the way, it's based on Pine, which was released originally by the University of Washington in 1991. And it's meant to be, as I said before, an easier to use alternative to MUT or NeoMUT. And it's a more lightweight approach to the mail reader concept. So to start Alpine, we just have to type in here Alpine and hit enter. And it's going to take a moment here to create the subdirectory. It shouldn't take too long. There you go. So here we have the welcome message. This is going to appear only once, as it says on the top of the screen here. And you can read it through if you want to. I already done this, so it just provides you a few informations about the license and so on. So nothing else to see here. And we can proceed by hitting E. And this is the main menu for Alpine. So what we need to do, we need to configure Alpine. And as you can see, we have a setup menu there, which we can call up by typing S. Now we have also here several subcategories. And the one I actually want to open is the config, which is in the middle there. It's the fourth option. And this one, of course, allows you to set or unset many features of Alpine. So let's press C here. And now let's configure several things. Now, the personal name of the top here, it says no value set, and it's using by default my name because it's taking the name of the user on the computer. So if you want to change that, you can hit enter there and type in the name you want. But in my case, this is going to be fine. Next, we need to go to the user domain. Now hit enter here. And what we need to specify here is basically what is the domain that you want to check the email for. So I'm going to take here my domain for the website and that is my name plus .net. And then I just hit enter here. 
and I can move down to the SMTP server. Of course, this is for sending mail, so I need to configure this. Now, the settings for your SMTP server varies, of course, depending on the domain. So if you have a host, for example, and you have a private domain, you can definitely go up and check the IMAP and SMTP settings for your host. Or if you have Gmail or another service, you can check them out on the service website. Now, in my case, the SMTP server is going to be my domain. And then we need to type in a colon and specify which port. Now, the port in my case, it's a secure port. So it's going to use 456 here and then slash. And we need to specify which user. So I'm going to type in here user equal. I'm going to use my info email address here. So I'm going to type in info at my domain. And then a slash again. And I want to specify that it's using SSL. So this is going to do it for my SMTP server. So I can just hit enter here. Now I can move down to the inbox path because we need to specify this on our server. Now, again, this is going to depend how your server is structured. So in my case, I had to search that up on the host guide. And if you have, for example, a host which provides an inbox and several subfolders under inbox, then you'll have to put them into curly braces. So for example, in my case, if I want to set the inbox here, I need to type in the curly brace and type in my domain name, close the curly brace, and then specify inbox. And then I can hit enter. Now I'm going to jump over the next two because I don't need them. And the default FCC, as you can see there, it's using the sent mail. So this is where we want to specify which folder we want to use for sent mail. Again, this is going to depend from the server you're using. Now, in my case, it's very particular because in my inbox, I have actually a set of subfolders like the sent mail, the archive, and also drafts, as well actually as trash. So I need to tell Alpine that my sent folder and the other ones are subfolders folders of my inbox. I need to type in this line, which is curly braces again, my domain. And I need to put in the colon here and the port for my IMAP server, because I need access so that I can read this folder. And I type in the port, which is the secure port is 993 slash. And then I need to specify again the user, which is the same as before. So I'm just going to type it in very quickly and then a slash again, and I specify also here SSL. Then I'm going to close this, and then I need to specify the inbox folder with a dot, and then writing in here, sent. So my sent folder is basically a subfolder of the inbox folder. And then I can just continue. I need to enter the password here to validate this. So I'll need to enter the password for my user, for the host. And this is now done. So we can move down here for the saved messages. I'm going to put here the archive. So I'm going to repeat the same process as above. I'm just going to put here another folder at the end. So I'm just going to open the curly braces, put in my domain here, a colon 993 slash user equal my username again. A slash again, then SSL and close the curly braces. And then again, inbox dot archive. And then I can just press enter. Then I can move down here to the postponed messages, which is basically drafts. So I can enter here basically the same thing. So curly brace, my domain, colon, the IMAT port slash user equal my user. slash SSL again and close the curly brace. And here I'm going to type in inbox dot drafts and then continue. The last one I'm going to configure here is the trash. So I'm just going to hit enter here and type in the curly brace, my domain, and then colon 993 slash user again, my username. slash SSL, close the curly brace, and then inbox dot trash. And there you go. 
Okay, so this is enough for me. There are also other parameters that you can change here, and I definitely recommend you to have a look at them. For example, here we have the composer preferences. So, for example, you can allow now changing from, and we have also preferences for replying to messages. For example, if you want to have copy to address to from if it is us, or include attachments in reply, that might be handy. You have also here sending preferences. For example, here do not generate sender header, it's already selected. We have also here enable 8-bit ESMTP negotiation, and we could also enable background sending if you want to do that. By scrolling down here, we have also some folder preferences. And what I want to activate here is enable the incoming folders collection and also the enable incoming folders checking. As I want to have the folder checked when I open them. Now we have also here some others for the address book, which is also available in Alpine. And then we can go down to the message index preferences. For example, right now we have delete skips deleted, it's already selected, and mark for CC is also selected, but we can also enable or disable other preferences here. We have also viewer preferences, so basically what you see in the messages list. And we have also news preferences if you are using those. We have also printing availability here by enabling these options. And also we have some advanced command preferences here. Most of them are already enabled. We have also some advanced user preferences here, for example, like assuming slow link or how to move red messages and so on. And if we scroll down here, we have many of these. So let me go down here. We have also some other options here, for example, for the initial keystroke list and also the default composer headers, or we have also the customized headers. This is especially useful if you want to set a specific return address and so on. So I definitely recommend you here to have a look at these options and see the ones that you might want to have. Once you are done here, you can type E for exiting setup and commit the changes. I'm going to type in Y and hit enter and the configuration changes have been saved. Now, we have also other options that we can change in terms of colors. If I type in again S and then K for colors, you can see right now we have no color. So I can go down and say, for example, I want to use this Force NC8 color here and hit Enter, and you can see the combination. I can also set other colors for the index line style and so on, and we can define also here the colors we want to have. I'm going to keep this as it is right now, so I'm just going to exit the setup again by hitting E. Now, let's have a look at another configuration that we can take care of. Let's press again the S for the setup and type in, in L. So here we can basically configure our folders. So let's hit on Mail here. And we can choose a nickname here. So for example, I'm going to leave this to mail. I don't need to change this. Now for the server, I can type in here my server and a colon again. And I need to specify the SSL port for the IMAP server, which is 993 in my case, and then a slash. And again, the user that I'm using, which is going to be again equal to info at my domain and then a slash again, and I'm going to specify again SSL. It might be SSL or TLS, depending on your host. You'll have to check that up. Now, the path and the view here can be actually empty, so I can delete this path and then exit and save by hitting Control X. So I will type in Y here to confirm, and the collection list entry has been updated. So we can return to the main menu here by hitting O and type E for exit setup. And now we are back into our main menu. So let's go now into folder list here. And as you can see, we have two categories here. We have one is the incoming folders, which is our inbox, basically. And then we have our other folders. So the folders we have as subcategories. This, again, is specific to my domain, but yours might be different. So if I go to incoming folders here, I need to type in again my username for once. and the password. And as you can see here, I have the inbox. So I can enter the inbox here. And at the moment, I have no messages. So I have an empty inbox here. Now, if we go back, for example, by hitting the minor than symbol, we go back to the folder list. In this case, I have only inbox because these are just incoming message folders. Now, if we want to go back again, we can hit O here and M. And we'll go down again to the folder list and this time go to mail. 
Now, as you can see, we can also here go to the inbox, but we can also go to the dot here. And here I see the folders I have in my inbox. So for example, if I go to the sent folder here, I will see which messages I have. And you can see I have a message here, which I sent already this morning when I was testing this. So to open this message, I could just hit enter here and you can see what I sent. So I go back to the message index with the minor than symbol, or I can exit here with O and M and go back again to my folder list and go to the incoming folders and go to inbox and I have my empty inbox here. Now, if we wanna compose a message, we don't see the compose command here. So we need to press O and now we can see the compose command there, which is done with the C on the keyboard. So it's asking me continue postponed composition. I will say no and I can enter here basically the email message to whom I wanna send it. So I will just send it to myself very quickly. So I'll just type in here again, my email address and I don't have any CC. I can type in an attachment if I have one. And as an object, I'm gonna type in hello from Alpine. And, and for the message, I'm gonna type in Alpine on Arch. And there you go, this is all for me. So I can send this, as you can see on the shortcuts on the bottom of the window with Control X and send message, so yes and I need to specify once the password and now the message has been sent. And it's normally taking about two to three minutes to fetch messages here in Alpine. But if we go back shortly, for example, to the folder list here and go back to the sent mail by going to the dot here and go to send, you will see I have the new message here that I just sent. And as you can see here, it says also I have a new message which has been just sent here. I didn't open it yet here in the sent folders and I can do it from here. And you can see Alpine on Arch. Now let's go back to the inbox here. I go to incoming folders and you can see I have a one new message. So I can hit enter here. You can see that's the message I just sent to myself. So I can hit enter here to see it. And if I want to, I can reply. So I can type in R here and I want to include the original message. So I'm just going to type Y and here I'm going to type in great, thanks, and then send with control X. So I'm going to send the message and there you go. And this is done. So we can go back to the message list here with the minor than symbol. And as you can see, it changed the status to answered because I did answer to the message here. And of course, because I just sent it again to the same address, now I have a new email which just came in, so I can just open it up. And you can see here, great thanks that I just sent to myself. So this is a very basic way to configure Alpine. And I definitely encourage you to explore it if you want to try this out. It's fairly simple, as you can see, you just need to know the settings for your mail server. And once you have those, it's very easy actually to use Alpine. Now, I'm sure there are many more options that we can configure. And if some of you guys already use Alpine since a long time or are Alpine expert users, please let me know in the comments below and share your knowledge with the community because it's impossible to show everything in a video. And if you have a question about this video, let me know also in the comments below. As usual, I will try to answer you as soon as I can. So there you go, guys. This is the Alpine Mail client. I hope you like it. It was fairly simple actually to configure once I know the server configuration. And if you try it out, let me know in the comments below how you like it and what's your experience. Or if you are an expert, let me know also some suggestions and share it with the community. I hope also that you liked the video guys. If you did, you can hit the thumbs up and subs to the channel if you haven't already, because that always helps us out. And if you want to support us, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal through our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video guys and I'll see you soon in the next one.